What's up, everyone? George Belecci here with Nesson Patriots beat reporter Dakota Randall. As the Pats prepare to head to Houston to take on the Texans in Week 5, a battle of two one and three teams. But, Dakota, this week, the priority for the Patriots isn't necessarily their opponent, but it's offensive line depth. Isaiah Wynn and Mike Owenu out on the COVID list, while Shaq Mason and Trent Brown did not practice either due to injuries. David Andrews, only starter left. You spoke to Ted Karras this morning. What's your read on the depth and the situation with that position group? Well, and all four of those players were absent from the media portion of practice again today, so we don't know what their status is going to be. And real quick on Unwenu and Isaiah Wynn, the COVID situation is very confusing, and it's hard for a lot of people to understand. We were just trying to figure it out before practice, and we really couldn't get it. But from what I do understand is that one of the players was a positive test while being vaccinated, and the other is a non-vaccinated close contact. So from what we understand, one of those players, we don't know which one's vaccinated and which one's not. One has a chance of playing this weekend. The other is a long shot. So that's all I know. And as far as Shaq Mason and Trent Brown, the fact that they didn't participate in practice the first, first two weeks puts their status in doubt, still could play. We don't really know. But the problem is this is an offensive line that's just been terrible really since the start of the season. And any sort of players that are out this weekend are going to make it harder for them to find the consistency that they've been looking for. And it's just another tough blow for them. And again, if they're going to go anywhere this season, the offensive line needs to get it figured out. And it's just it's it's not going to be easy with so many players out. Ted Karras, the guy you spoke to this morning, he said he'll play anywhere offensive line, but hasn't played left tackle right, yeah. since high school days. So that is kind of the read on where they're at right now. Now, the running game is what's been lacking. You go away from Mac Jones's protection. It's been struggling the last three weeks. There's nothing short of that. But the Texans are allowing 140 rushing yards per game, 140 per game defensively. So this has to be the game for the Patriots to get back on track on the ground. Well, you, you certainly hope so, right? And it's been really bad the last few weeks. And last weekend, they finished with minus one yards rushing, I believe. So you'd like to think that facing the Texans, who have a really bad rush defense, that they could figure it out. But again, we just don't know with all these new pieces out on the offensive line. We don't know what the alignment's going to look like. And even if they do find success, which is, is possible, it's not with the offensive linemen that they're going to be rolling with for the rest of the season. So you're still going to lack the consistency that this group needs. But to your point, you'd like to think that they would have some success against Houston this weekend. And a new face, old face, back at practice today, Jamie Collins wearing yep. number 58. Juwan Bentley was limited yesterday. Kyle Van Noy did not participate yesterday. So, right. again, while they're lacking depth in offensive line, there is a resurgence and especially an experience facing Jamie Collins back. What do you think the immediate impact he has, if at all, for this defense? Well, listen, with Jamie Collins, my thing is the Patriots clearly are trying to reunite the 2019 boogeyman, but that team flamed out in the second half of the season. It didn't really end so well. And so those players now are two years older. They've all kind of lost a step. Dante Hightower hasn't been good this season. Neither is Kyle Van Noy. And Jamie Collins is Jamie Collins at this point. He's kind of unreliable. And Stephon Gilmore, the best player from that 2019 defense, now is in Carolina. So the reunion I'm not really, I'm not really that fired up about. But with Jamie Collins, listen, he has athleticism. He can make plays. Uh, he's good rushing the passer. He's decent uh, defending the run. So we'll see how it goes. He'll help, but I don't think he's going to be the savior for this linebacking corps, which has a lot of issues. And you bring up Stephon Gilmore. Now the Carolina Panthers traded yesterday for a sixth-round draft pick. J.C. Jackson has been the top corner this season, but now it's a real thing. Now he right. prepares all week knowing he's their guy to blanket the top receiver on the other team. What's your read on that whole situation? The Gilmore situation is bizarre. I mean, it's a, it's a rabbit hole to go down. I guess the way I would characterize it is, at best, it's a cost-cutting measure that makes you a worse team today than you were two days ago. And at worst, it's a total mismanagement of an asset. So either way, I don't like it for the Patriots. That Again, they're a worse team than they were. But for me, the most concerning thing is the secondary, as it currently is constituted, is good enough to sort of slap it together and make it work for the entire season. But the depth is just not good enough. So if suddenly now J.C. Jackson suffers an injury, Whereas if it happened before Stephon Gilmore was traded, you'd think, all right, well, Gilmore's coming back. They'll figure it out. But now if J.C. Jackson goes down or even somebody like Jalen Mills, then you're, you're really in a tough spot. So it's, it, I think the secondary is good enough to make it work. But if there's an injury now, you're, you're in real trouble. Luckily, their first week without Stephon Gilmore at the roster at all, we'll be facing the Texans, either Davis Mill or Terod Taylor at quarterback for them. Dakota Randall, George Belecci, Fernesson. Thank you, Dak, as always.